Hello everyone. So my topic is all about the rules of inference for quantified statements. So these are the following rules of inference for quantified statements. First, we have the universal instantiation. Next, universal generalization. Next, existential instantiation and existential generalization. First, let's talk about the universal instantiation. When we say universal instantiation, it is the rule of inference used to conclude that P C is true where C is a particular member of the domain given the premise for all of P X. So this is how it looks like. For all of P X is true, therefore P C has also to be true. To understand better this uh, rule, we have here an example. Determine whether the argument all the learners in class A understand mathematics. Joy is a learner of this class. Therefore, Joy understand mathematics. Is correct or not? So, let us assume that Px denotes x is a learner in class and Qx denotes x that understand mathematics. So, first we have uh, first premise for all of Px implies Qx. Next, we have the Pjoy uh, because Joy understand mathematics. This is our second premise. Next, we have Pjoy implies Qjoy. It is done by our universal instantiation from number 1. We substitute, uh, we replace x by Joy because Joy understand mathematics. Na, uh, therefore, QJoy is true is because it done by modus ponens form 2 and numbers 2 and 3. That's why this, uh, this example is valid. Next, we have the universal generalization. When we say universal generalization, it is the rule of inference that states that for all of Px is true, the given the premise that Pc is true for all elements C in the domain. So this is how it looks like. Pc for an arbitrary is true, therefore for all of Px has also to be True. In other words, if PC holds for any arbitrary element C, then we can conclude for all of PX. Uh, for example, justify that for all of PX implies QX and for all of QX implies RX are true, then for all of PX implies RX is true where the domain for all quantifiers are same. So let's see be some arbitrary element. We have here first premise for all of px implies qx. Then we have another premise for all of qx implies rx. So pc implies qc. It is done by universal instantiation from number 1. We replace x by c. Next we have the qc implies rc. It also done by universal instantiation from number 2. Next, we have PC implies RC. It is done by hypothetical syllogism from numbers 3 and 4. So, therefore, for all of PX implies RX is true. It is done by universal generalization from number 5. Next, we have the extent existential instantiation. When we say existential instant instantiation, this rule of inference allows us to conclude that there is some element C for which PC is true when there exists PX is true. So this is how it looks like. For all of PX, therefore, uh, for all of PX is true, therefore, PC for some element C has also to be true. In other words, if P holds for some element of the universe, then we can give that element a name such as C, for which PC is true. C cannot be arbitrary. Next, we have the existential generalization. This rule of inference states that for all, there exists Px is true when for a particular element C, PC is 
true. If we know for some element C in the domain, PC is true, we also know that there exists PX is true. So this is how it looks like. Uh, PC for some element C is true, therefore, there exists PX must also too be true. For example, here, we have uh, show that if there exists Px and Qx is true, then there exists Px and there exists Qx is also true. To prove, we have here first premise. There exists Px and there, uh, there exists Px and Qx. Next, we have Pc and Qc, but it is done by existential instantiation from number 1. We replace the value of x by c. Next, we have PC, it is done by the simplification from number 2 here in this part. Next, we can, we derive from there is PX, it is done by existential generalization from number 3. Then, same in number 3, we have QC, it is done by simplification from number 2. Then, we have there is QX, it is done by existential generalization from number so therefore, there exists Px and there exists Qx is also true. It is done by conjunction from 4 and 6. So that's all for my report. Thank you for watching and thank you for listening.